Hey gang, Scott here. I want to revisit creating an AI adaptive preset in On One Photo Raw. I did a longer video about this upcoming feature. It's a new feature coming in Photo Raw 2023, and you know, kind of went through a lot of things with adaptive presets. In this video, I just want to slow it down a little bit and, and walk through specifically creating an AI adaptive preset of your own. And special thanks to David who pointed out in my previous video, because I was whipping through that portion of it, I didn't get into the details of how to make sure you're selecting like auto AI and develop and making sure that's part of your preset. So we'll cover that here. David, thanks for pointing that out. I do appreciate that. A couple more things about the video here. I am using a pre-release of Photo Raw 2023. So the final product, the interface might look a little bit different. Uh, so just keep that in mind. What you're seeing here is a pre-release. And uh, if you are adding on one to your toolkit, upgrading Photo Raw, check the show notes, use my link there doesn't cost you anything extra gives me a little support and i've got an offer code there too sdp20 that might knock 20 percent off of your purchase all right so ai adaptive presets i'll let you go watch the other video to understand the whole thing here but we're going to build up an adaptive preset that understands the different elements in this scene and then apply it to a different photo so let's start with the basics to build up our look here tone ai auto color auto white balance, right? Just automatic settings. Now we get to the adaptive stuff, right? I mean, auto is kind of adaptive when you think about it. It will be different based on the photo you're working on. But really here is where the magic happens. We go into add filter. We have our mask AI options and all of these different segments of the photo have been detected by Photo Raw. And so for this scene, I want to punch the mountains a little bit, maybe some treatment to the sky, maybe some treatment to the, the foreground. These would all be common elements in you know a scene like this where I've got mountains and foreground and background, right? So let's start with the foreground, click on that, color adjustment. I'll do a fall treatment on that and maybe back off the strength a little bit. This starts always to taste what you like and what you prefer for your photography. Uh, let's treat the mountains again using this mask AI tool here that's built into the adjustments and the filters. I've done a different video on that. Dynamic contrast, we got a little pop before after on the mountains. Cool. Let's treat the sky. All right, building up our look, another color adjustment. And this one I'll treat with desert. And you'll notice that I did not go and touch any of those masks. I let the tool create them. I'm not doing any hand painting. And that's a best practice for building an AI adaptive preset. Let Photo Raw do that construction and really judge the photo on the look, not the like precision of the mask, because often we actually do want softness at the edges of masks so things blend together. There's always exceptions, but for building up the AI adaptive preset that you want to use again and again, don't hand paint the masks because then you'll get that hand paintedness built into your preset and that's not going to translate across your photos. So that's best practice is, you know, do not do hand painting when you're designing a preset. And speaking of adaptiveness, I covered this in the other video, but uh, luminosity masks. I always like to add, uh, not always, sometimes I like to add a, a glow. Let's choose, uh, um, for, this, for this scene, I think I chose normal in the other one. I'm also a big fan of radiance glow. Let me hit radiance glow. But I'm adding a luminosity mask, so only the brighter things will glow. And then let's tailor that down some, maybe, maybe, maybe down here. That luminosity mask is also adaptive. It will be applied if part of a preset based on the tones of the photo you're working on. So this is really powerful stuff. And one more little thing for, for my preset, I'll add a, uh, a color enhancer, no changes to the styling, but the blending mode will go to overlay. We'll bring that down to low 20 ish that just gives an extra little pop of contrast before and after uh, i've got a separate video that explains all the details of how that works but here's my set right i've got these five filters i've leveraged mask ai on several of them a luminosity mask on one and we have our auto settings in develop we're ready to create a preset now the next step 
is important. You're going to create the preset. You want to select specific things in that save settings as preset dialog so that you get only the AI smarts and you're not uh, mistakenly taking slider values for things. I'll show you how it works. So we'll head up to our settings menu and choose save settings as preset. And let me make this dialog a little taller here so we can see all the different options. So things that you see that are like not grayed out, retouching, develop effects, those are things that have been applied to this photo. Uh, retouching, I do not want to include those in my preset. The objects will change, the dust spots will be different. You know, that's not something that's conducive to an adaptive preset that you'll use on a variety of different photos. This can be really helpful if you've got the same photo, you know, the you know, same scene 20 times, that same dust spot, great, wonderful, but not for a preset. There's two things that are very important to build your AI adaptive preset. First, effects. We used a variety of masks. You want to apply the masks. And again, best practice, those masks are you know, like one click kind of things. You used mask AI, let Photo Raw figure out what's in the scene and what is a mountain or flora or sky. Or you used a luminosity mask because that will be built based on the tones of the image you're working on. The second thing for develop and the auto settings, we want the auto settings. In color and tone, open up tone, turn this off and turn on only auto tone. If you have any of these other settings selected, you'll get the, the slider value of the photo you're working on, like the photo you're using to build up the preset, and that won't necessarily translate to other photos. Same thing for color. Turn off the top order color and just turn on auto color so you get that auto button. And I will also turn off lens corrections. If I have photos that have been taken with a variety of lenses, uh, I'll have you know, either Photo Raw do that if you have that set in preferences, or I'll turn that on as I get into each photo individually because different lenses have different corrections. Great, we'll give it a name and let's call it Adaptive Mountain. And I'll save that out. So we've got that adaptive preset built. We're ready to apply it to another photo that has a similar type of scene. Similar insofar as there are mountains and trees and sky and so forth, but otherwise very, very different. Let's give it a go here. Uh, very different scene, very different photo, but we do have those same types of elements, mountains and trees and sky. Let me open up my preset panel and we'll choose that adaptive mountain preset. If I actually hover there for a second, I'll get a preview of it. Cool, I'll click once. Let me collapse that panel now. We can see that treatment has been applied. Now, check out what's going on in the tone area. If you hadn't noticed in the first photo, uh, contrast was more like 11 and the highlights were maybe negative 30, this one's negative 50. The mid-tones are a little higher in this. The shadows are actually opened as opposed to, uh, well, maybe been opened on that. I'm looking at actually the black slider. Uh, this one is not as deep. The point being that AI auto button, that's selected. Now those settings to turn off all of the other sliders except auto in tone and in color, that translated. Uh, lens corrections, we did not override. And so if I open up the lens corrections, can see this was with a Nikon camera, a Nikon profile has been applied to correct the lenses. That previous photo happened to capture with a Sony. So different styles, I let Photo Raw figure that out, leaving the lens corrections out of the preset. Let's take a look at effects. We'll collapse that one down, and there we go. We have very different looking masks because this was the color for the flora, right? If I open this up, Mask AI, flora. In this photo, the trees are certainly getting a little bit of that color there, but they are very different than what was in the previous photo, which was more scrub and kind of covered maybe the lower third. Dynamic contrast for the mountain. Before and after, we can see that pop on the mountain. If I view that mask, you can see it right there. Same thing on up the line. Whoops, I meant to collapse that, not turn it off. 
But let's talk about the glow. This was the luminosity mask. View that. Look at that. That is for this photo here. So all of this adaptiveness was done with a single click. So uh, I guess that's really it for building up your own AI adaptive presets. You know, to recap some of the best practices here, you know, first, use the auto settings in develop the auto AI or auto match if that's your preference, auto color, so that you get that out of the shoot for all your other photos you apply. Uh, second best practice building up the look, when you're building your masks, use mask AI, luminosity masks. You can also use color range masks. Those will be specific to the photo you're working on. Photo Raw will read the tones and colors in the photo you're applying the preset to, and it will tailor it you know, adaptively to that photo. And then the third best practice is when you're saving the preset, make sure you apply the masks and effects and you dig into the tone and color areas in that preset and turn off everything except the auto settings. And then you have a very strong recipe for a preset that will apply wonderfully to a broad spectrum of photos. Hope you found the video useful. Any questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.